Hello everyone. We are going to do something really fun today that you can just learn from a few simple steps and then use this, what we learned today, to create many different, um, many different things. So I got this Christmas card um, and I just thought it was so cute, but mostly I loved um, that it's such a simple bird to paint. And I love just the simple branch coming out, you know, and then and then these shapes. So I thought we would do this and put a background, all right, um, either gray or blue or whatever color. And you can change the color of the bird, right? I mean, to any color you want. You could have it be blue or orange or brown or white or gray, anything. Black, be beautiful. But it's just so simple to draw this. Okay, and, and, and to paint it. And so I thought we would do that together. And sort of like a template for you. And then you can take it and turn it into any little colored bird you want. It could be a summer bird, a winter bird, doesn't matter, right? Um, I also got this new paper that I wanted to try. I got this a few weeks ago um, when I went to the art supply store. And I, um, I've never tried it. It's by Hanamula. In the past, I have not been happy with their paper, but I keep hearing that this is worth trying. I still am on the hunt for a decent paper for every day that's not crazy expensive. This was not nearly as expensive as, let's say, Arches, but still, I think, a little too much for everyday practice. But I'm going to try it um, because it's just becoming a problem. I, I, really, I really miss my old paper that I can't get anymore. Um, but it's not like I can't do work on any of the papers that I have. It's just that you'd like to find one you really like, you know? Paper is the most important material. It's more important than your brush. It's more important than your paint. So let's just see how this one, how this one works. This is the only size I could get um, which is way too big for me, so I'll just use it for smaller things and then cut it. All right. So when you buy a new block of paper, it is all um, glued together on all four sides except for a little bit in one corner or in the front. This is more typical. You just take a palette knife, slip it in there, and very, very gently work it around the edges. Be careful because some are glued so heavily. And you know what? This is... That's perfect. I'll just use this piece. Okay. And... I'll just put this down. All right, so if you've got a big sheet like this, right, you can always just fold it over and then, so we can make lots of sheets from one sheet. This is basically what I do for a very large sheet of paper as well. All right, <clears throat> and I can tell the difference between the front and the back. The front is is much more textured, but if I couldn't, I would put X's, and I'll just do that. I put an X in every corner, and that means when I tear it, I know which side is the right side. And there are many ways to tear paper. This is just the way that I tear paper. We'll go one more. So with this nine by 12 block, you can do four little paintings, like greeting card size. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's draw the bird first, okay? So I've got an HB pencil, and, and really it's just two things. One is a circle, and it does not have to be perfect, all right? So, um, draw a circle, okay? And then on top of the circle, you draw a sideways oval, and that's it. So you've got a circle and a sideways oval. The sideways oval becomes the head, 
There'll be little, little things flipping off there. And here we connect it again. Big fluffy bird. And then we've got um, the beak, so the eye. We'll just put the eye right in the middle. A little bit low. Okay, and then straight out from the eye will be the beak. We'll attach to the head, and the beak will come in a little bit and out like that. All right, so really, really simple. Really simple. Now, it does have a little bit of a wing coming off this way, right? And you don't even have to have to draw that. If you just draw this much, you'll be fine. So the feet will come out after we draw the branch. And for the branch, we're gonna move the branch right in front here, maybe let it go up this way, and then over this way, and then we'll have a piece of the branch maybe going this way. Um, and just draw draw your branch just really simple okay and then the feet will come afterwards and you can just put really honestly just take and make like a little toe like this and they have three toes that come over so you can make one this one the center is longer and then over here don't think too much about it right just just do it don't be try to be precious with it okay um let me get my eraser And we can erase the inners here, right? Okay, and there you have it. That's really all you need to draw, all right? So super simple. And I, I don't know if this will help, if you can see it a little bit closer. So a circle, a sideways oval, do the little eye in the center and then the beak coming out. Connect the head to the body, draw a little branch, draw the feet with three toes. All right, now there is a tail. And so we're gonna have the tail just come this way, just a little bit here and then maybe here. Like that does not have to be real or looking like any particular bird. This is totally just whimsical and fun and lovely, all right? So we're gonna start with our background. And I think I wanna do kind of a wintry background. So I'm gonna use my, um, I was gonna use my deep, deep light, but I think, I think I'm gonna use Gonzai paints. Um, let's see here. I have a set that I got put together that was just winter colors. So you use whatever colors appeal to you, okay? I'm going to use these. Um, I put these together for winter and I'm going to use them. So I'm going to I'm going to use this pale blue. I'm going to use some darker blue. All right. And I'm I'm just going to paint around my bird and when you get up to the little head let it have kind of see how I'm just making my brush make leave little spots there on the edges that's just to make, give it a little bit of fluff, right? I'm not just doing a smooth line. I'm 
and kind of making it look a little bit um, fluffy. Hmm, this paper's kind of nice so far. And you can pull this blue out And it does not have to go all the way to the edge. You can just push some water into it and let it just sort of gradually disappear, right? Come here. Come by the little beak. And then over here, I might do, might give it a little bit more so there's some fluffiness happening here. See that? I just see how I just left a little bit of fluffiness. Now I'm gonna take some of this lighter blue and, and drop it in because it's got white in it. And just use pretty colors, whatever lights you up right now. I'm kind of thinking that beautiful, cool winter blue sky when it's clear and really cold. I'm not going to do any snow. Just, just a brown branch. Then I can take, I think I'm going to take some white. Drop in some white. Just kind of sparkle it in there. So cute. All right, and then I'll do the bottom the same. See how I left, use the tip of the brush to leave a little bit around there. Now, our, our bird, um, might be on a branch that has all sky behind it, but there might be some other colors. So I might just throw in something dark. Maybe there's something dark happening over here, like a pine tree, you know? But don't be, um, don't be too precious with it. Just have fun, really. But you see how, it just, just be easy with it. It's not supposed to have any detail. It's supposed to be sort of dreamy, right? I like that. And I can just drop in water. Just take water and spatter it on my background and that'll make it really even more dreamy, right? It's okay if it gets on the bird because we're gonna let this dry before we paint again. Okay. All right, so once you get your background on, you're just going to let this dry completely, and then we'll come back and we'll paint our little bird. Okay, 
So I got a smaller brush and now it's time to decide what color you want your bird to be, right? And I want you to use your own colors. I want you, I, I want you to have fun with this. And I think I'm going to do mine in gray, grays and white. I want these to be white feathers and I'm going to do underneath his little face here. I'm going to do the body first. Um, so he's got a little shadow here. I'm going to let his face be white. So I'm just using the tip of my brush again, right? And I want him to have just a light gray. And use short little stabby marks with your brush because that's feathery, right? That's feathery. Then over here, I'm going to put a little bit of blue with it for his shoulder. Just a little bit of blue there. And then, and then down here, he's going to have a little bit of a shadow, right? So I'll put in some... I'll put in some darker color because even white would be shadowy. See, I'm using little stabby marks right up to the branch. And then over here, Maybe there's a little bit of shadow. On the side. There. <clears throat> Let's keep it really simple. And then under his tail, same thing. We're going to and don't even worry about the feet. Just go right over them because the feet are going to be dark. top part of the tail is going to be darker than the rest, so whatever color you choose, start darker, and then dampen your brush, and pull it down a little bit, like that. I think that's pretty good, and I think I'm going to give him Thinking. I think I'm going to leave his head white, but <clears throat> because it's never going to be all white, I'm going to add in a little bit of like a peachy color. Where there would be shadow just to make it a little bit darker in that area. Again, use whatever colors you want, but keep it simple. Don't get, this is not supposed to be a highly detailed bird, right? And I can even put maybe a little bit more shadow here right along that branch that would be dark all right now his little beak I'm gonna make it brown or, or gray and basically you're gonna start with it being a little darker at the bottom right it's kind of dry your brush off and then use brush that isn't full of paint, just to sort of spread it to the rest. And then soften in here. Okay. 
Okay. This is very, very tiny for paint, so you can either paint it or, my suggestion, if you have a fine liner, you can go in with a fine liner and you can choose where you want the highlight to be. I'm gonna choose sort of up here. And just sort of draw around where you want the highlight to be. Oh, that might be too wet still. I got too close to the eye. All right, we'll give it a minute. Um, let that dry for a minute. We'll paint the branch. If the if the if the face is if I I got too close, I thought I was far away from it, but I'm not using a very small brush. So okay, we'll leave that be for a minute. So let's paint the branch. So for my branch, I'm going to use brown. I'll start with a lighter one. I can use like a raw umber or even a burnt sienna. I could use raw sienna. I could use gray if it's a beech or a birch tree. But if I start with a lighter color, get a lighter color on there. And then I can pick up a darker color and go underneath it. My brown is very cool. And I'm gonna go right up under that bird's belly with the darker color. Do not be perfect, get out of the lines because the branches are um, they're not perfect, right? They're not smooth. So you can kind of make it a little bit bumpy. And sometimes I just drop in other colors, like a little blue. And then maybe just some water. Oh, got a little bit bleedy there. Okay, so we've got our little toes that needs to be painted in. You don't need to get crazy with the branch because it'll it'll dry and look fairly real just by just by giving it that kind of dimension there. But there is I need to go here. I'm afraid that it's too wet. Okay. Right under the bird it's gonna be darker, right? Now, one thing I noticed about this paper is that things really got soaked into the paper. It dried um, with that white cast on the paper. 
I don't typically love that. When I see that in a paper, it's not a good sign to me. Um, and I put that paint on pretty dark, so it shouldn't have done that. Um, but it happens sometimes, and, and it's just, I don't know. You see what I mean by that? You see the white cast coming through? I'm not a fan of that in paper. All right. Now, let me see if his little face is dry enough. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So for the eye, you leave a little white spot, all right? And then you go around and you draw the shape of the eye, all right? And you color in, in the center, up to the catch light, kind of around it, and leave just a little bit of light on either side. And then with your brush, just very lightly touch the ink and bring it out to the side if you need to fill in a little space. So it makes it look like the, the center part is darker. He's got a little bit of a catch light in his eye. I'm thinking, so for his, um, for the face shadows, I'm gonna take some of my gray and blend it out with water so it's really light. If you did a black mask around his face, you wouldn't really need to do this. But since I didn't, I wanna put a little bit of detail around his face. So this part is going to be a little bit darker. And then around his eye, I'll just use the, those little stabbing marks again. Here. Rinse my brush and then just kind of soften underneath. There, now he doesn't look so one dimensional. Just play with it, have fun. We're not going for realism here. This is a, a beautiful little suggestion of a bird, right? Now for the feet, it's it's pretty simple. You're just gonna take a dark paint when it when it's dry enough and you're just gonna paint down those, those little fingers. And they can blend almost right into the And then you could take, if you wanted to, take a little bit of darker when it dries. You could even use fine liner and put some nails, some claws in, talons. Keep it very suggestive, right? Don't get too hung up on details in this. I'm not even painting a feather. It's just little stab marks to give the illusion of feathers. Just like when I went around it, I did little stab marks with the, with the background paint, all right? Super simple, right? Super simple. And you could go with so many different variations of this. I mean, the sky's the limit. And I would keep it simple the first time. And then you can just sort of branch out and you could even look at other birds and, you know, and see if you um, want to match a specific bird. You could make the head shape a little different. You know what I mean? But in the beginning, keep it very simple. A circle and a sideways oval. That's it, all right? And every time you do it, it'll be a little different. It'll be a lot of fun. It doesn't have to be a specific bird, okay? It's lovely. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you this weekend with a dandelion lesson. Take care.